Americans eat about 10 million peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every year, as said by the National Peanut Board. So it's no surprise that not only are they easy to make, but they taste good too. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches have a long history because they are pretty inexpensive to make, and it turns out they aren't too bad for you either. Back when my mother used to cook dinner for all the children in the house, I never wanted to eat the dinner she had prepared. I was a pretty picky child. After a while, she would stop hassling me to eat and would tell me I'd be without dinner. As I sat there hungry, I would wait for my mom to be preoccupied, and I would sneak back into the kitchen to create a magnificent sandwich. My favorite sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches have been around since before the 1940s in the World War II. It is said by Linda Stradley in the article, History of Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich, that the American soldiers added jelly to their peanut butter to make it more palatable. Once the soldiers came back home, peanut butter and jelly sales went through the roof. Peanut butter had already been a big hit, with major brands like Peter Pan and Skippy had already been produced. However, the first use for peanut butter was not for eating, but for dentistry. In 1880, they crushed peanuts into paste for people with bad teeth to act as toothpaste. After that, the peanut butter's popularity grew from sacred and now appear in our everyday lunches. Making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is pretty simple, but there are certain steps that you need to take to make or break the sandwich. First, you need to start by grabbing two pieces of your favorite bread. My favorite is wheat. Then it is very important, and most people don't do this step, but you must spread peanut butter on both pieces of bread. Only peanut butter on, only place peanut butter on one side of each bread and make sure it is only on the top of the bread. For jelly, I prefer to use grape. But some people may choose to use strawberry or perhaps even apple. Next, place jelly on both pieces of bread as you did the peanut butter. I like to make my sandwiches very moist, so I place a lot of the jelly on the sandwich. If you're going to, if you're going for a drier sandwich, spread the jelly thinner. Now, for a fun look, I make sure the sandwich isn't square in front of me, and I cut it cut it diagonally. Not only is the sandwich easy to make, but it's pretty good for you too. Peanuts are by far the best part nutritionally in the sandwich. Peanuts are full of protein, niacin, folate, which has more than any other nut. Peanut butter and peanuts naturally don't have any cholesterol and contain over 30 essential nutrients. Next is the bread, which if you go with the wheat route, has a good bit of fiber, which you need in your 2,000 calorie intake. The average child will eat about 1,500 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches before he or she graduates high school. I myself ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day at school. It's a good thing peanuts are so healthy for you. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich is, have been around for such a long time because of the taste. For example, peanut butter and mayo sandwiches were also made during the World War, and that's no longer happened. But remember, when you're making this delicious snack, don't put too much peanut butter because you're trying to get stuck on the top of your mouth.